Oh, hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum. So let's go ahead and understand how does navigator.push and navigator.push named works. Now here with this navigator.push, we have actually pushed a new screen or new pages on the stack. Now we know that a stack is maintained by navigator. What do we mean by that? I mean, well, if you have lots of pages, they are put onto on the top of each other using this push.navigator, using this navigator.push. So like if you have earlier, if you have a welcome page, now from there, if you want to go to sign in page and then somewhere we call navigator.push, actually in general, the sign in page would be on the top of welcome page or onboarding page. Now, of course, we are here a blank screen where it says that sign in page. Now we can go to sign in page and define an app bar so that actually we know what's going on. So here we could do app bar inside our scaffold so that we can have a back button and then it will make a lot of sense that what we are talking. Now let's save this. Now here we do see that there is a back button. Now we can go back and you see, so there is a transition from left to right. That was like that. Okay, let's do it one more time. So now it is coming from right to left and then here is left to right. So why it's happening? Because as I said that earlier, these pages are on the top of each other. So, well, for example, when I click on this, Actually, this button, next button gets called, and whatever is there currently, it keeps is there, it keeps this current screen or page there, and then what it does, it pushes a new one on the top of that. So that's what happens over here with this navigator.push. All right, okay. Now, of course, inside this, to be able to pop up a new screen, we still need to use material page route because this one actually build a new page for you. Why we need this? Because uh, it's going to build something for you, okay? So you can't use child widget. And these are the things complicated process that happens on the fly and material page route is responsible for them. So all we are doing over here, actually calling this sign in page. In fact, over here, you see that we have this section container. This, uh, this is our sign in page. You can be smart or do an experiment. You can simply just put all the code over here. And most probably we need to remove the const and yeah, that's it. Now let's try it again. So let's come over here and now we'll push a new route on the stack. You see it happened. So whenever you call material page route inside push, all it does is actually completely takes a new screen. I'm sorry. It takes a new screen and then it shows is on the UI. At the same time, it builds and rebuilds if necessary. Anyway, to be organized, I'm gonna put back what we had early. Now this is all about navigator.push. How about navigator.push named and how it works? Now I'm going to comment this out and of course at the same time I'm going to copy this so that we can understand how navigator.push named work. Now over here you can try push named. All right. Now of course with this we do see that there is an error. Okay. So the difference over here is even in fact I can keep this so that we know clearly we can't run it, it will throw an error. So over here, you do see that it takes a name from this one itself, you can understand. It says push named. So it's a, it means that push a name. That's all it says. And here, at least you need to pass two arguments. One is this context, another is this route name. And what does it tell you? So you have to do it like this. You have to push a name. Now the name could be sign in and you will see that the error is gone. Now, of course, uh, this, the logical explanation that how things are working over here, 
But of course, if we go ahead and try to run and try to go to this new page, definitely we'll see that we'll have error. Okay, now of course we have error. Now error says they couldn't find a generator for route setting sign in in widgets app state. So which means that actually we don't have a sign in route registered because the route settings is a function. It takes the route name and eventually it finds the related screen. Like for example, sign in screen, it has to be also defined somewhere, finds that, builds that and show it on the screen. But now it says that it couldn't find, okay? Even though the structure syntax looks okay, but the thing is sign in, it couldn't find it. So if you're going to use a push named, definitely you have to actually define this route somewhere else along with this UI or the this class name. All right, so where to do that? In general, one of the place is inside this material app. Now inside material app, we have to define our routes. Now in this case, actually home property takes the default route, which is our initial route like this. Initial route. So initial route is in general this slash. Now since we are going to use push named, we need to define our own routes so that Flutter can find them through route settings function. Now two steps to do. First you have to define initial route in this case, the slash, which is our, in general, it should be our welcome screen, this one. And over here, you also have to define the route itself. Now, what is this route? The route takes a list of routes that should be available. Now, in general, if you use initial route, you must not use welcome. Now, you need to define everything over here. So inside this, first we have to define our initial route because right now, if you don't define initial route inside this as well, it's not going to work. Not just here, you also have to define it here. So here we do like this. So this is our initial route. And after that over here, all we need to do pass context and it refers to something. What is that? It should be welcome. Okay. So that's our first initial route or initial route. And after that, we want to go to sign in page. So now here we need to define a sign in page. All right. And at the same time, you need to pass context. And here you define this sign in page. All right. Most probably we need const before that. Okay, cool. So now with this, our routes are registered. And uh, this time, if you go ahead and call like this using navigator dot push named using this one, it can find it from here. So Flutter will save this routes in its memory for this app. And then whenever you call this navigator dot push navigator dot push named, it will try to look up the routes name using route setting function, which it does automatically internally. We don't need to worry about that. All right. So now let's go ahead and restart our app. So let's go ahead and run. And here we are in this one. Okay. We need to have actually a slash looks like uh, it needs a slash. Okay, let's go ahead and put a slash, which is more like a route that usually we know if you are coming from WebDAB, where you have to use slash for routing name. And you see it works. So that's because our routes are defined over here. And uh, we that push named can find them. So the idea is, if you want to use navigator dot push, you can just simply pass your screen name directly. But if you want to use a push named, then you should be using a route name like a string. And at the same time, you have to register your routes, which means screens in routes properly. And when you should be using them? Well, if your app is big, it has a lot of routes. In general, in that case, you should be using this push named because well, 
this comes with a lot of convenience and if you want to maintain and uh, change the routes name later but not changing too much code then this is the way to go because in general this strings you'd be saving somewhere in one file with a const variable name so what it means that if you want to change a routes name or the way a route should be directing or go to new page you just change in one place but if you do like this if you want to change in future you most probably need to change in many places and which is also not maintainable so this is more recommended